Hello everyone and welcome to our SP Dockit webinar. Today we are going to discuss a pre-upgrade migration. We are going to talk about the features that we have built in into SP Dockit uh, that help you prepare for a potential upgrade from to next version of SharePoint and how can our tool be helpful in these, uh, in these endeavors and in these projects and how can you be more successful when you're planning or performing a SharePoint migration. My name is Tony and I'll be your host for today. So I have been working with SharePoint for a fairly long time now, uh, uh, ever since uh, SharePoint 2000, uh, 2003. And I have been a SharePoint MVP or uh, Office Service and Services MVP for uh, seven years now. Uh, I work mostly with our customers to help them uh, better use our tools to better understand their problems and to help us uh, better understand what exactly we need to build for you to be more more efficient. Uh, the, the entire idea uh, between um, behind our entire tool set is to allow everybody uh, that, that is using every, every customer of ours to be more efficient in their, their projects and, and managing SharePoint in day-to-day -day operations. So we work with uh, customers large and small from all over the globe and we help them to uh, to work on these SharePoint uh, projects and SharePoint uh, maintenance, maintenance stuff. We have a couple of different tools uh, aimed for system administrators. Uh, today we are going to talk about SP Docket, but we also make other tools for SQL servers, uh, SQL Docket, that helps you perform an auto discovery and inventory of your SQL and inventory. We have a tool, Syskit, uh, that helps you monitor your Windows-based infrastructure, so your, your servers and everything else uh, uh, regarding uh, on top, that's built on top of Windows. And we also have a tool called CloudKey 365 that is built for Office 365 customers that want to create documentation and manage their uh, Office 365 tenancies. So uh, an agenda for today is I'm just going to give you a quick overview of uh, how you can ask questions and uh, uh, what is the agenda for today. Uh, then we are going to talk about the SP Docket in general, and then uh, we are going to drill down into specifics. How can you do a successful farm assessment, and how can SP Docket help you? So it will be just a couple of slides, and then I'm just going to drill down into demos to show you exactly on a demo farm what can be done with our tool and how we can help you with your uh, with your project. So if you have any questions, there is a, a QA box uh, in the uh, GoToWebinar interface. You can post your questions there, and then I will read uh, all the questions uh, at the end. So we will leave like 10 or 15 minutes at the end uh, where I'm going to read your questions. If uh, th there will be enough questions or we get a lot of interesting questions, we're just going to post a um, additional blog post on our SP Docket blog, and you will be able to... Um, get uh, to, to read all these questions uh, once again. Uh, we also, uh, so uh, we'll also give, be, be giving you um, a presentation deck, so all the slides that uh, you are seeing today will be available for download, and uh, there will be a recording, so typically tomorrow or a day after tomorrow, uh, you're going to receive an email from a GoToWebinar that's going to include in the entire recording of this webinar. So if you have to leave today earlier or if you have just joined us, uh, there will be a recording for you to, to review afterwards. So SP Docket is our uh, tool that helps you be more efficient, as I said, when working with SharePoint. And we provide you a lot of different features that are aimed for uh, different types of uh, problems that you're trying to solve in your day-to-day -day operations. Uh, so we, uh, for, for start, we get an entire inventory of your SharePoint farm. So we uh, collect all the settings and everything that's stored inside of uh, SharePoint from central admin to all the service apps, web applications, site collections. And then we put this into our inventory base where uh, we can provide you with various kinds of reports starting from uh, general documentation that contains all the settings and everything that we have gathered. So you can uh, give this to your client or just keep it as a backup if you are managing an internal SharePoint. We also provide you with various kinds of reports so we can uh, help you to analyze uh, content and structure and stuff that you have in your uh, SharePoint and we can then be uh, provide you with reports and insights about your SharePoint farm. 
And then we can also uh, help you analyze these settings. We provide you with a set of best practices uh, and uh, um, analysis that then that you that we use to tell you if something has been misconfigured or there are some other problems in your uh, in your environment. On top of uh, generic uh, inventory and documenting stuff in your SharePoint, we also help you manage permissions. So you can use uh, our tool to uh, assign uh, pr privileges to users on top of your SharePoint sites, or you can use our, our tools to uh, sorry, our tool to um, to give permissions to somebody or uh, clone permissions, transfer permissions from one, one user to another. So it all depends on, on what kind of scenario. Uh, you are you are doing. Uh, we we tend to uh, give you the interface that is um, more uh, simpler to use than the uh, built-in interface that you have, and we also provide you with some of these sweet actions like cloning and transferring the, that is not available out of the box. When it comes to governance, we uh, provide you with a lot of re reports regarding your content and structure and stuff that you have inside of your SharePoint. We are going to see a lot of these reports today in the demo. We also have a, a, something we call queries and rules that uh, allow you to enforce governance uh, policies. So for example, if you would like to enforce a versioning on all the document libraries in, in your environment, you can easily create a rule that's going to run per periodically, let's say once a day, and then all the document libraries are going to have versioning enabled uh, and then uh, enforced uh, across your entire organization. So uh, when it comes to migration projects and upgrades from uh, one SharePoint to another, uh, you typically uh, need to plan this ahead. You need to understand what kind of a SharePoint farm you are dealing with. And I understand that many of you guys are consultants that uh, help other customers to perform migration and perform upgrade from one SharePoint to another, and that you might not be involved in the original, um, might have not been involved with the original farm setup. So that's why uh, we help you with SP Docket to understand what kind of a farm you're dealing with and what are the potential problems when you are preparing an upgrade from one version to another. So uh, with our tool, uh, you will be able to uh, understand what kind of farm you have in front of yourself and how you can be, uh, how you should approach this particular project. So this is an example of what you are seeing on my slide right now, uh, an example of a Microsoft Guide from upgrading to SharePoint uh, 2013 in this case. So uh, this is something uh, that Microsoft identified as some of the pre-upgrade steps that you should uh, perform uh, before, uh, before moving to, um, to a new version of SharePoint. So if you have a SharePoint right now in front of yourself and you're planning an upgrade to a new, a new version of uh, SharePoint, uh, this is some of the things that you should uh, check and prepare for uh, before you move to the next version. So these things uh, vary a little bit, so just if you want to learn more, I would recommend that you just click on the link uh, that I have s put in, in, on this slide and just go to TechNet to uh, learn more about uh, particular steps that are listed here. But these are some of the things that uh, you would typically check, like uh, delete unused content and uh, check if there are some features that uh, are not supported in the next version and check databases for corrupt data and things like that. So typically, uh, mi migration. There is a lot of things that you need to check before before you do before you do uh, go in and start uh, migrating. So some of the stuff that we can help you here and how you can be more efficient. So as I said, we gather all the inventory stuff. We gather all the information about your SharePoint and then we analyze share, uh, stuff that we have gathered to see if you are using the best, uh, the various best practices. Best practices are a very wide area of our tool and there's a lot of these best practices. Not every single one could be used in the um, upgrade project, but some of the stuff that we typically recommend to customers is to check if SharePoint is up to date. So our tool has an internal database of all the SharePoint versions and we will automatically detect if you're using a version that's not supported for upgrade. So we always recommend you to be on exact uh, a SharePoint version. So if you are planning an upgrade to SharePoint 2016 from SharePoint 2013, then you need to have uh, at least uh, SharePoint uh, Service Pack 1 
2013 says so back one to be able to up, uh, be, be eligible to be upgraded to 2016. So the, these checks help you to be more efficient and to find out all these things before you actually start moving databases from one SharePoint to another. As I said earlier, we also have a bunch of these uh, content and usage reports. So we, you're, we're going to see all these uh, reports in the demo. Uh, we are just gathering everything, uh, everything from your databases or uh, structure and documents. And then we are showing that to you so that you can easily analyze what kind of content you have. And uh, maybe you can identify, for example, some dead documents, some documents nobody has access to, some very large sites that are probably not being used and things like that. So we help you to maybe find some stuff that doesn't need to be upgraded. Maybe there is a site collection that nobody uses and this can go to archive or just stay in the current SharePoint in the read-only mode because nobody is actually working on that project anymore. So with these reports you can be more efficient and you can find these things inside of your data and your content database. We also help you uh, in terms of uh, permission reports. So uh, sometimes you might have uh, groups in your SharePoint uh, that are not being used because they don't have permissions. You can find users that uh, have been left behind um, and they don't have access to your anything in, in the particular site collection. Or you can uh, find out that there is like a lot of users that uh, uh, are either disabled or have been removed from your active directory. So uh, if you want to clean up a little bit and make sure that you are more efficient when you are signing permissions, maybe you can um, delete all these users and uh, remove these groups that are not being used. So there's a lot of things that uh, can help you clean your SharePoint a little bit. Once you have a, a, an additional farm, so let's say you are moving from SharePoint 2013 to 2016 and you prepare uh, like two farms and you want to ensure uh, that uh, all these uh, settings are exactly the same as they were in SharePoint 2013, you can use our compare tool to compare two different farms and just make sure that you have everything configured in exactly the same way. And as I said before, you can use our queries and rules to enforce uh, policies that you might have uh, in your organization in the new SharePoint and to make uh, sure that everything is configured as it should be uh, according to your governance policies. So today uh, I have prepared uh, three different demos. Uh, we have three different steps. So the step one is something uh, I called uh, infrastructure assessment. So let's imagine that I am performing a project where I need to upgrade from SharePoint 2013. And let's say I'm doing this for a client, so I'm not uh, uh, I was not involved in the original setup, so I, I'm not 100% sure what, what they have. They uh, also don't know exactly. So um, I'm going to use SPDocket to dig a little bit deeper and to try to find out what kind of a farm I'm dealing with here, what needs to be upgraded, how many stuff I have in the database, and then I'm going to run some best practices to see if uh, everything uh, related to upgrade is up to date and uh, is everything okay. So let me switch to my demo environment just quick here. So I'm now in my demo environment. This is a SharePoint farm and what you are looking on your screen is our SP docket to install the right in front of you. So if uh, this was a, a real upgrade project, the first thing I would need to do is either uh, install or uh, just run SP Docket in a SharePoint uh, farm of my customer. And then I would do something called we call take snapshots. So this is going to retrieve information from your farm and retrieve uh, settings and stuff that uh, might be interesting to me. So I can choose options that I want to document in this particular case. So I can choose the level of detail I need for uh, my analysis. I can choose if I want to document SQL Server, IS, personal sites, if I want to document all WSPs, custom farm solutions, uh, permissions and stuff like that. So I can create a, a, sn a snapshot like this and I can go into and retrieve all this information. For the purpose of this demo, I have already did that, so I'm not going to finish this in this case, but 
uh, I would just need to click next and then the system would start uh, gathering information that I need. But as I already did that, I can go to view snapshots and I can see all the various snapshots that have been created for me. So I have prepared for this demo yesterday and I can just uh, open one of my snapshots and I'll be able to see what I'm dealing here exactly. So as you can see, uh, I have a SharePoint 2013 farm. This is the version that I have. Uh, it doesn't tell me much if I don't know this by heart, but uh, the system already knows that this is the July 2014 cumulative update. So this should be good for um, an upgrade to the next version or to upgrade for 2016, uh, sorry. I can take a look at farm topology. So this is a fairly simple farm. I have one web front-end server that hosts entire SharePoint. And then I have an, an additional server that is actually uh, the SQL server that hosts my database. So this, is, this gives me a fairly uh, quick view of uh, what exactly I have in my system. I can go and drill down further. I can take a look at uh, what kind of servers do I have here. So for example, I can take a look at what kind of virtual machines I have here. So fairly standard two virtual machines to run the system. And then I can, for example, if I want to understand how big the content is, I can take a look at the, my content databases. In this case, it's very simple. It's, I just have one content database, and this, this is a demo environment. It's not so huge. But if uh, this was a real environment, I would definitely need to pay attention on uh, how big the content database is and how many site collections I have and uh, uh, how how large is the actual content in these databases. So for example here I only have 15 site collections which is okay and the database is not that big so the entire migration would be fairly easy in, in this case in, in terms of uh, how much content I have. So if you're planning a, a, an upgrade project and if you have access to customer environment you can create a snapshot like this even before you send them a quote so you can understand how big the environment is and how long your potential project, upgrade project, might take here. So uh, the information about the amount of content and site collections can be very useful when you're planning something, something like that. One other thing that uh, you definitely need to check is uh, take a look at the uh, what kind of solutions, custom solutions you have in the system. So as you can see here, uh, there are some custom solutions that have been installed. And this is very useful because you need to understand that there are custom solutions and you need to be aware uh, if these exist. Because uh, when you are creating a new farm environment for your site collections, you need to uh, redeploy all these solutions and um, before, before you start the actual move of the content because there might be web parts or features that are activated on your site. So having an information about custom solutions is very useful. On top of this simple list, we also provide you with some additional tooling to help you um, analyze these solutions and to understand what kind of uh, solution you are dealing with here. So the first thing I can show you is uh, our solution deployment validator. Uh, and this tool is going to analyze the actual manifest of uh, our, our, your WSP tool. And you are going to see if there are any potential problems with this solution. So if you take a look at this one uh, that's shown on your screen, this solution, particular solution, contains two, uh, DL, two DLL files and these DLL files, according to Manifest, should have been deployed to your global assembly cache. And in this particular case, uh, you are seeing that one of these is missing. So this indicates that during the deployment of this actual WSP, something went wrong or uh, as in my case, I just went to uh, Global Assembly Cache and deleted this particular DLL for the purpose of this demo. But if this was a real environment, you can use the tool to verify if everything is okay, which is very useful in, in situations where you have uh, multiple um, web frontends and sometimes if the timer job fails or something happens, the solution might not get deployed uh, correctly to all the different, uh, all the different uh, uh, um, all the different uh, web, web frontends. So this can be useful uh, when you're doing something like that. Uh, we can also pro uh, provide you, uh, I was able to choose that during take snapshot phase, uh, to um, 
to, uh, to, to back up all the WSPs because sometimes the customer is not going to have WSP handy because somebody, some other partner came in, deployed something and they had no idea what it was and they never stored it anywhere. So you can either back up all the WSPs during the take snapshot phase or you can just use uh, the extract WSP feature here that's going to just give you the file and then you can take this file to the other farm that you are upgrading to and then just redeploy the farm there. Of course, uh, uh, from SP Docket perspective, um, we are not 100% sure what is in the file, so we just analyze the manifest and if check if all the files are there. So I would still recommend that you talk to the original developer to ensure that uh, uh, the actual solution works with the next version of SharePoint and that uh, it's going to function as, as it should. So that's, that's outside of the scope of this presentation. On top of analyzing uh, deployment, uh, we have partnered with our partners from Rencor that uh, create this very nice tool called SPCAF uh, that helps you analyze uh, code quality inside of your custom SharePoint solutions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to analyze the same WSP with their tool. Uh, we have a plugin that connects to their um, uh, analysis engine and then uh, it creates uh, an information for us that gives us information about what kind of a solution this is and if there are some other potential problems inside of this solution. So I can see that there are some errors that might be problematic like uh, some code that hasn't been uh, de developed in a best practices manner. So you can use this even before you start your migration to check if any of the solutions that you have inside of your solution are potential, potentially problematic and if something needs to be changed uh, in order to be deployed to the next, next version. So let's jump one step further. So this is the best practices section. So I said we gather all the inventory and then we analyze it according to the latest Microsoft best practices and some community best practices and some other checks that we have built inside of a tool to see if uh, everything is as it should be. One of the things that you definitely need to take a look at here uh, when you're planning an upgrade to the latest version, uh, that is uh, if your server is up to date. So for example, um, I can take a look here and see if SharePoint is up to date. So as I said, we already have a built-in version inside uh, SP Docket that um, the text if you have a farm version that is older than something that is recommended. In this case, uh, we, we are recommending you to have a SharePoint 2013 Service Pack 1 and this version is uh, after that. So this particular in this particular case, you're okay and this SharePoint is up to date and you can use it to, to, to upgrade to, to the new version. We also have some other best practices related to versions. So in some cases, uh, a customer might be on a cumulative update or other build that has been revoked. So you might have something that is not upgradable at all. So we check for that as well. So we will tell you if that has happened. And in some cases, uh, uh, which is not the case for SharePoint 2013, you might be on a SharePoint build that's not being supported anymore. So in this case, as you can see, uh, this one is supported till 2023. Uh, so that's okay. But uh, you might have a different version of SharePoint that is not uh, to the uh, upgraded to the latest version. But we also have um, something else. So for example, in this particular case, it seems that uh, SharePoint uh, upgrades or uh, SharePoint patching has not been finished by our administrator. So here uh, my best practice is warning me that uh, the, 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 the entire upgrade of this particular farm hasn't been or the entire patching for this particular farm hasn't been finished. So even before I start thinking about migration this is something that I should check and that I need to do uh, in order to verify that uh, everything is okay and then patch the original farm before, before I move the content to the new farm, just to make sure nothing goes wrong during my migration uh, and upgrade project. So one other thing that you might want to check, and uh, there is a couple of best practices that we have here, uh, is related to 
our solution deployment phase. And in this case, uh, I would need to open a different snapshot that actually has that. But so I'll just skip that. But in this particular case, uh, it, it would show me if there were any uh, WSPs that were not deployed correctly. As, I, as you re recall, I showed you that earlier in the best practices in the assembly validation, validation tool. So one other thing that uh, we can also check is uh, site collections. So here um, the system would show me if there are any uh, site collections that have either duplicate IDs or uh, if uh, there are features with duplicate IDs. So sometimes in SharePoint, uh, especially during backup and restore, uh, in certain situations, you might end up with uh, two different uh, en entries that have a same ID and that this can cause potential problems when you're trying to upgrade to the new version. So um, I would recommend that you check these best practices and to see if there is anything that uh, is potentially causing the problem. So here, as I said, no, I don't have any uh, site collections, web applications or features with a duplicate ID. And we also have one additional check to verify if your sites have been upgraded to the latest UI version. So if you remember, before we had SharePoint 2007 and then SharePoint 2010, and you can, uh, in 2013, you had the option to uh, uh, stay, uh, upgrade the farm to 2013 bits, but still stay on 2010 uh, look and feel. So this can be a problem if you are moving to SharePoint 2016 because the system needs to be to in, in the latest uh, UI version. So we are checking for that as well and alerting you if there is something else that needs to be done in order to fix this farm uh, particularly. So I'm going to show you one additional feature that can be useful for uh, when you're trying to rebuild uh, a new farm. So let's say I have uh, my SharePoint 2013 farm and I want to recreate this farm uh, as 2016. The only uh, out-of-the-box way to upgrade is to create a new farm, create new servers, new virtual machines, and then use um, the database attach a pro process where you just take the, the database, uh, move it to the new servers, and then reattach the content to the new farm. So there is no like in-place upgrade uh, for SharePoint 2016. So in order to help you with uh, creating a farm that looks as similar as possible to the to your original farm, we have uh, built in the uh, out-of-the-box integration with AutoSP installer uh, where uh, you can use uh, our, our tooling to uh, to retrieve information about your um, about your farm. So I'm just going to open a different snapshot here. And then uh, once you have all the information that uh, about your farm, you can provision uh, an AutoSP installer configuration. Just run through this wizard, and then it's going to create an AutoSP installer file uh, that, that is a, the input file for uh, AutoSP installer PowerShell script. And this PowerShell script is going to allow you to recreate the farm in a similar configuration as it was uh, like your original farm. So this wizard is uh, fairly complex and it's out of the scope of this uh, particular demo. So I'm just going to leave it here. But if you have any need to reprovision your farm uh, uh, with SP Docket, you can uh, re rely on our integration with AutoSP installer to recreate the original, the original farm. So uh, that concludes my first demo. Uh, regarding the uh, infrastructure assessment. So if we jump into my next demo, we are going to see how can I use SP Docket to analyze what exactly is being used in this farm. So I'm just going to open my farm again and I'm going to take a look at the content and stuff that I have inside of a database. So for the purpose of this demo, let's pretend I'm a consultant. I haven't worked with this client before and I just need to understand what exactly they are doing with their SharePoint here. So I'm just going to uh, jump into my other other environment and you're going to see here uh, what kind of a system I have here. So uh, this uh, report is going to give me a little bit of information about my farm. So as you can see here, I have a couple of site collections. I can see their sizes. 
I can see how many site collections per web application I have, uh, how large is my farm, what is the largest database and stuff like that. So I can get quick information about that. So the first thing I want to take a look at is, for example, my content type usage. So, so let's take a look at one of the site collections that I have here. So just going to open this particular one. And this is going to show me what kind of content types they are using. What I'm interested to find out here is if they are using any custom content types. Especially if these content types are provisioned from a content type hub. This can be problematic because I need to know about that and then I need to pre-provision a content type hub uh, just to make sure that uh, everything is in order. So, uh, in order to see if they have any custom content types, I'm just going to open my report called content type usage and then I'm just going to look for any uh, red ones and this indicates this is a custom content type. I'm just going to select that and then the system is going to show me where exactly in my site collection we have this custom content type being used. So. Uh, this can be all okay, the, con the custom content type, if, if it is not being used or deployed from a content type hub, still is still in the content database, so this is not going to be any problem. I can easily deploy this from a content type hub, uh, sorry, from uh, when I'm upgrading a site collection, this can be uh, just upgraded along with my, my stuff. So just something that I need to take a look before I upgrade just to make sure this if this is being used. One additional report that can be useful for me when I'm planning an upgrade is something called, we call that documents. So these are the documents uh, that were created inside of your SharePoint but the original author uh, does not have uh, access to the document anymore or the original author has been disabled in Active Directory so this particular user does not exist or things like that. So I can take a look at this uh, just to get a quick glimpse if um, something is wrong here. So, for example, uh, it seems that Joel Brooks doesn't work for our company anymore. So, it can show me some of the stuff that he has created and stuff that uh, might not be needed anymore. So, I can use this to drill down a little bit to open these sites and see what exactly are these documents. And maybe if I don't need these documents, I can easily delete them or just um, don't, uh, if I can choose not to upgrade this particular site collection. As I said, we can also use storage metrics. So the storage metrics report gives me information about uh, content sizes. So we start uh, to give information uh, from the top level and the top level in this case is your content databases. So you can see all my, uh, in this case I have five different databases. So I can then use my uh, drill down ability to uh, drill into my awesome computer incorporated and to see uh, what are some of the largest sites in this particular database. This is a demo database so we don't have that much content but I can see that uh, my San Francisco site is taking almost 35% of my content database and of course I can see also that my awesome computer is taking 14%. So I might have a big site collection that is uh, for example, 99% of a database. So this is something that I need to take care of. And if it, uh, the content database is fairly large, which is not in my case, it's only 345 megabytes, I need to decide if I want to split these site collections into different databases and stuff like that. So this is very useful because I can drill and see uh, what are some of the largest sites. And if I have some documents, uh, I can also take a look at uh, some of these documents for example, uh, have a lot of versions and stuff like that. So I would need to drill into to see what kind of documents I have here and how many versions they have and stuff like that. So this is something that can be useful when I'm analyzing the content, uh, uh, analyzing the content of your uh, site collection. Okay, so that uh, is storage metrics. We talked about that documents and one other report that I want to show you here today is the unmodified content. So as company evolve and things change, there might be some sites and some site collections that haven't been used for a while. So we have this report that helps you detect all these sites and all these site collections and then potentially uh, you can choose not to upgrade them and as I said before, you can choose, that, uh, choose not to uh, upgrade them at all or leave them as is or use uh, some of the third-party uh, tools to migrate just parts of this content. So, for example, if we have a, a San Francisco site that hasn't been used for 95 days, 
which is like just a demo environment, but you might have a, a San Francisco site that hasn't been used for 16 years, and in that case, you might choose not to not to upgrade that particular site collection or as just delete in the entire uh, branch and just not m migrate content like this. Or you might ask uh, the uh, responsible business owners if they need something else or if they have moved to another system or another site collection just to get an understanding of uh, what they are doing here. And this report can be useful for your uh, diagnostics to try to find out what exactly is going on. In terms of uh, cleaning up the, 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 your site collections. I already mentioned that we have a couple of uh, reports that are related to permissions. So uh, we can use the tools that we have here in order to analyze uh, your sites uh, for missing groups, missing groups with disabled owners, uh, groups without users, users that have been disabled in your Active Directory, or users that um, do not have permissions. So, for example, here what you're looking at is uh, we have a, a group uh, uh, inside of your SharePoint that doesn't have uh, uh, any permissions. So, this means that this is just a group that uh, doesn't make much sense uh, in terms of your uh, your permission permission wise. So, maybe if uh, you can detect uh, uh, what it where where it is, like using this report, you can just delete this particular group if you don't need it for some other reasons like uh, sending emails or something like that. So this is something that can be useful when you're trying to uh, remove uh, some unused content. In the same way you can look into groups without users. So these are just empty groups that don't have um, any users inside. So that means they uh, cannot be used to, to um, to assign permissions because there is nobody inside. And you can also take a look at the orphaned users. And the orphaned user is uh, somebody who does not, has been disabled inside of Active Directory, doesn't exist or has been just disabled. And then you can take a look at, uh, uh, do you really need these users inside of your groups and your um, permissions inside of SharePoint? Uh, and you can potentially use one of our cleanup wizards to just clean these users. And so, for example, if I click here, a wizard is going to pop up and it's going to show me all the users and uh, I, I can choose what kind of operation I want to perform here. So, for example, I can delete all these orphaned users or delete SharePoint groups without permissions or anything uh, that is being shown in, inside of a reports. So I can just use this wizard to clean my SharePoint a little bit. So this is more a uh, thing when you're trying to clean up your permissions, but it can be useful during migration just to clean your SharePoint a little bit. So once you get out on the other side, it looks a bit cleaner and it's more manageable, especially if you have a lot of groups that are not being used, and a lot of disabled users, it can be a, a nightmare to manage all these things. Okay, so I'm just going to close that. Okay, and then we are going to jump into the third part of my demo, and that is going to be compare. So let's pretend that uh, uh, my project is nearing the end, and that I have a situation where I have built in my 2016 farm. Uh, my servers are running, uh, everything has been provisioned, and now I'm getting ready to migrate my content from 2013 to 2016. Of course, before I do that, I need to ensure that everything has been configured exactly the same in my new farm as it was in my old farm. And as you know, in SharePoint, there are so many settings, and sometimes you might forget something. So that's why we have built in our compare engine. So I'm just going to jump into here. I'm just going to open my 2016 farm. And I'm going to take a look and see what, what exactly I have here. So, as you can see, this is my 2016 farm. And this one has been patched to November 2016 patch, feature pack one. So this is my 2016 farm. I can take a look at my farm topology. And in this case, I have built a little bit larger farms. So I, I used to have one server, now I have five different servers. And now I can use my compare tool to compare uh, my two different farms. So I'm just going to click here and I'm going to see 
how my farms are different. So I'm just going to choose the farms compare option and I'm going to choose the option to compare two different farms. So on my left hand side I'm going to choose my uh, 2013 farm and then on the right hand side I'm going to choose my 2016 farm. So here let me just close this just a little bit. So this is my old farm and then I'm going to choose this is my new farm. The only challenge I have here is my original farm uh, had only one server or one web front-end server. My new farm has more servers, but the system is smart enough to detect if um, similar roles are installed. So we, uh, the, the built-in engine already suggests some of the default mappings. So uh, the server, the system understands that you had a SQL 2012 and that this is equal to SQL 2013 in your new farm. And it also knows that you had one server called SP2013001 and that you have five, oh sorry, four different uh, SharePoint servers in your new farm. So uh, when, when the comparison starts, uh, uh, the system is just going to ignore all the names. So it's just going to compare settings. It's going to show you the differences between different settings and it's not going to tell you anything about different names because if you have two different farms, it's completely normal that you have different names. It's also going to allow you to uh, map different accounts because you might be running an upgrade from one domain to another and things like that. So this is also going to be uh, automatically mapped for you. And uh, of course, some of the um, names of um, service applications are going to be different. So for example, uh, you might have a one name uh, for a, an application in your original farm and different name in the in your 2016 farm. So it's going to match by type, but you can also always do some changes and create a different mapping that might be more suitable for your needs. We are also going to help you map your custom host headers so that, that this doesn't cause any problems. And once you go through the comparison to the through the mapping phase, we are going to analyze all the settings and then show you the exact differences that we have detected. So as I said, these two farms are not the same, which is okay, I know that. So the first thing I need to check, of course, the left-hand side was a SharePoint 2013 farm. This is 2016. That's okay. There should be a difference. But then I can take a look at the uh, services on server, for example, and you will see that uh, in my original farm, I had some services running. So for example, in that particular farm, I had uh, access uh, access on uh, was online and in my new farm it, it is disabled so there are some of the things that I need to check so for example here I have a application management service uh, disabled and here it's running so I need to understand if uh, any of these things is going to cause problems for my users and if a uh, uh, service that has been disabled maybe it needs to be enabled because somebody is using some some of the features provided by that service so you definitely need to do your homework and make sure that everything is configured as it should be. For example, I can compare my search settings and as you will see here, uh, I'll, I'll definitely notice that uh, the original farm didn't have search configured at all and the new farm has search configured. So this might be a business decision not to have search but it's probably something indicating that the original farm was misconfigured and it was missing search. But you definitely need to check with your user to see what was the reasoning behind that and maybe you don't need all the service applications and you might uh, want to remove some of these service applications. So compare like this can help you uh, to define what exactly is different and what exactly should be different. On top of SharePoint we also compare different servers in your farm. So for example I can take a look and check if my SQL server is configured exactly the same. And you will, as you will see, there is one very important change here in the first row, and that is the original farm had SQL server and Windows server, uh, Windows authentication mode enabled, and the new farm only has Windows authentication. So you might have uh, some other applications using uh, the SQL server, and maybe that was the reasoning behind uh, allowing people to connect with SQL server authentication. So if you move all the other databases along with your content database from SharePoint, you might run into some applications that um, uh, doesn't, um, doesn't 
cannot connect to the database. So the compare wizard helps you to detect all these situations. There are many differences in my situation because I had a different number of servers on one, one farm and, and the other and I didn't configure everything to be exactly the same but if this was a project I would definitely try to um, remove as many differences as I can and then once I'm sure the farms are the same then I would approach the process of uh, migrating the actual content from one side to another. Okay, so this concludes our third demo. And we are right now at the point where we can uh, answer some of your questions. So if you have any questions, just pop them into the box uh, on your, uh, in your GoToWebinar interface. And we got a lot of questions here. So I'm just going to try to go through some of these and try to answer them if I can. If not, we are going to blog it. So if, if it is very something very specific, uh, something very specific, uh, something very specific, I might not be able to answer that. But then we'll get back to you uh, with a direct email if we can help in any way. So Bruce wants to know if anything that uh, I have shown today is applicable to SharePoint Online. Uh, so. In terms of SharePoint Online, we uh, currently allow you to manage permissions uh, and that's the only thing uh, available in SP Docket. We provide you with a lot more information in our other tool called CloudKit 365. So I encourage you to take a look at that one. Uh, we are working to, uh, to improve the tooling and to give you more reports. So later this year we are going to introduce additional reports for SharePoint Online and we are going to try to uh, put uh, uh, SharePoint Online as uh, equal to our SharePoint uh, offering and to give you the ability to track both in the same way. Uh, Eman Emmanuel wants to know if it is possible to use SP Docket outside of a SharePoint farm in, in like offline mode or something like that. So in order to retrieve some of the information that I have shown you today, uh, you need to run the tool at least once on a SharePoint farm because some of the API that we use to retrieve information about your central administration and stuff is, are not available outside of uh, boxes that uh, run SharePoint. So uh, you can um, run the tool on the SharePoint box, you can store the snapshot as a file and then you can take this file to your workstation and then uh, in the workstation you can uh, analyze the reports and stuff like that. You can also um, you can also connect from a workstation to a database that SP Docket uses if you install the database and then retry reports from, from there as well. But the actual gathering process happens on SharePoint box. Okay. So Oscar wants to know if uh, his question is uh, he needs to migrate from a farm from 2010 to 2016 and uh, he wants to know if he can use SP Docket to archive a cleaned up migration. I'm not really such, I'm not 100% sure if I understood the question correctly, but we, uh, we, we don't, uh, so SP Docket does not migrate any content, we just help you analyze your infrastructure if that was the question. Okay, hopefully it was. Uh, Venceslavo wants to know if all the features are available in the consult consulted license. Yes, SP Docket uh, has two different types of licenses. One is for people running their farms and we call that a farm license. And then SP Docket is licensed per farm. Uh, and if you are a consultant, we have a consultant license that is licensed per consultant and you can use everything that you have seen today with the consultant license. There is no limitations whatsoever for consultant in this particular area. Uh, Dominica wants to know uh, how to migrate from 2010 to 2016. Uh, Dominica, that is a little bit out of scope of this um, webinar. In theory, uh, for using the out-of-the-box tools, you need to have a SharePoint 2013 farm and then first upgrade your databases from 2010 to 2013 like a, in, like a staging farm and then upgrade to 2016. I would definitely recommend that you take a look at some of the third-party migration tools that can help you skip the 2013 step and just allow you to move your content from 2010 to 2016. 
especially if you are planning any kind of content reorganization, then the third-party tools can be more helpful uh, for you to be more efficient in this particular migration. Um, yes, the webinar will be available later on. You will be able to download it. Uh, you will be you will be getting slides and the recording as well. So Trent wants to know if we are reporting to see uh, um, if there is some content that hasn't been viewed. Uh, we are working on some additional features for that as well. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, I, I cannot give you exact dates for that one, but that's something we are working on and hopefully very soon uh, you are going to see not just unmodified content, but also content that hasn't been viewed. Uh, Oscar also wants to know what kind of permissions he needs to run SharePoint uh, SP docket inside of SharePoint. Uh, you need to have you need to be at least farm admin to retrieve information about your infrastructure. That's the bare minimum. And we have a very detailed article on our website where you can learn more about what exactly needs to be given to your to the user running uh, SharePoint SP Docket. So a couple of more questions if uh, everything is available in consultant license. Yes, uh, so everything shown today is available in all the licenses. There is no difference whatsoever. The key difference between consultant and farm is that uh, consultants cannot schedule a snapshot. They need to be there. They need to click on the button and then wait. Uh, farm owners, they can schedule this to be performed once a day. Uh, okay, uh, Ryan wants to know if uh, different reports can be targeted to specific areas. Yes, uh, so uh, as I said, with the farm license you can schedule a snapshot to be created once a day and then compare it every day and we are also going to show you if there are any differences uh, be before even you open something we'll see there will be like a red indicator showing that uh, the snapshot has something else. Uh, so I cannot pronounce your name, same process. Wants to know if um, uh, we can get uh, uh, more information about how these performance report, uh, permission reports are being generated. So there is like a, a database that um, we use to generate all these reports. And if you have some specific questions and you need some help, just send an email to support at xratio.net and we will assist you with uh, any kind of custom queries that you might have to retrieve uh, some specific uh, reports. Okay, Matthias wants to know if uh, which SharePoint versions do, do we support? So we support um, everything from 2010 to 2013. If you want to have uh, reports for 2007, we have an older version of the tool that supports 2007, but we have stopped adding new features for 2007. So um, you, you can get a uh, pretty similar level of uh, feature support, but uh, not all the features are available for customers running SharePoint 2007. Okay. So I think this concludes all the questions that I have for now. Uh, if there is something that I missed, uh, we will get back to you directly and you will be able to uh, get your answer from there. So to conclude, uh, SP Docket helps you generate farm documentation, analyze permissions, create audits, compare farms, enforce governance policies, and check your overall structure and policies. I encourage you, if you don't have a, a tool, I encourage you to download our free trial. It's 30 days and includes uh, most of the features. And if you have any problems, uh, any you need any help, just send us an email to support at acceleratio.net and somebody will, there, will be there to help you to speed up your assessment. If you're an existing customer, the same applies to you. Just send us an email. We'll try to help you as soon as we can. And if you have a need to better understand the tool, either uh, if you're trying the tool right now or if you're an existing customer struggling with something, uh, just send us an email and request a demo and somebody will be there to assist you. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you have any questions, as I said, just drop us a line. And I wish you a very nice day today. Bye.